The next signal property that we want to look at is whether a signal is periodic or non-periodic. So a periodic signal is simply a signal that repeats over and over and over. You, so you look at it in the plot and you basically see a pattern and that pattern repeats for all time. Mathematically, we say that there is some number t naught such that my signal x of t equals x at time t plus t naught for all time. So basically pick a time t and then go forward t naught and you're back to the same value. Go forward another t naught, same value. Go forward another t naught, same value. And that happens for any time t, for all t, for some number t naught. So this value t naught is pretty important. The smallest value of t naught for which this occurs is what we call the fundamental period of the signal. Often we don't say fundamental period, we just say period of the signal, um, but those are our synonyms. So t naught is how long in time you have to go before the pattern starts repeating. So its units would be you know, seconds or milliseconds or, or something like that. The other way of thinking about frequency or, or periodicity is in terms of the frequency. So if I know the period, t naught, I can compute what we call the fundamental frequency, f naught. So if this was in seconds, one over seconds is hertz. So when we're talking about linear frequency and frequencies, we're talking about something in hertz, cycles per second. So if t naught was two, meaning every two seconds the pattern repeats, the fundamental frequency would be one half hertz, meaning it completes half a cycle per second. If t naught was 0.1, meaning the pattern repeats every tenth of a second, one over 0.1 is 10, meaning the frequency of the periodic signal is 10 hertz. It repeats 10 times per second. Instead of linear frequencies, sometimes we often work in radial frequencies. That's how many radians per second. And f's and omegas are always related by just a factor of 2 pi. So to go from f to omega, I simply multiply f by 2 pi. All right, so that's what a periodic signal is. If you cannot find some t naught for your signal such that this is satisfied, or can, you know, kind of similarly, if you look at it and there's nothing repeating, there's no pattern then we call that a non-periodic or aperiodic signal. So signals don't have to be periodic. Most signals are not, in fact. And uh, we just call them aperiodic or not periodic signals. All right, let's look at an ex some examples. So actually, we're going to work this second one first, and we'll do uh, sums of periodic signals here at the end. Um, but let's work this through some basic things first. So periodic signals. Let's take a look at just a handful of different examples and figure out if they are periodic or not periodic. If they're periodic, we're going to figure out what their period actually is. So let's start with a very simple case. What about the signal f1 of t sine of 10 pi t? So a single sinusoid with frequency, radial frequency, 10 pi. So its frequency is 10 pi, which means I can figure out the period by using the relationship between t and omega that we had on the previous plot, on the, our previous chart. Previously, we said that the fundamental frequency omega was equal to 2 pi over t naught. So I could actually solve that equation for t and write t as 2 pi over omega, which is 2 pi over 10 pi in this case, which is 1 fifth. So this is a periodic signal, no surprise. Continuous time sinusoids are always periodic. And I can always compute their period using this equation right here. In this case, the period is one-fifth of a second. This sinusoid repeats every 0.2 seconds. All right, let's do another one. What about sine of 20 pi t? So slightly more complicated, but same math. Radial frequency of 20 pi. That means its period is 2 pi over 20 pi, which is one-tenth. So we've doubled the frequency, and by doubling the frequency, we have halved the period. So instead of repeating every 0.2, now we repeat every 0.1 seconds. Okay, f3 of t, what about sine of 37 t? Well, what is that frequency? So right here, I really want to see something times pi, but that's okay. When I say I want to see something times pi, is I, I usually like thinking in linear frequencies. Per, personally, I like to see 2 pi f there, so I can easily pick out the linear frequency. 
However, this is just sine of omega t, so whatever number is there is by definition omega. And I can solve for its period like I always do. The period is always equal to 2 pi over omega. Omega in this case is 37. Oops, let me pause. Sorry about that, went to the next chart too quickly. But this is the period right here. This is still a number, right? 2 pi over 37 is still a number, and that is the period of this signal. All right, on to the next chart now. <laughs> So what about when we take sums of signals? So this is really the, uh, the first thing on the, the chart that we uh, skipped just a second ago. We started with just periodic signals. Now we're going back to the kind of next example, which we'll just kind of cram into here, which is fine. What if I have f1 of t, which we just figured out was periodic, plus f2 of t, which we also just figured out was periodic. Remember, f1 of t had a period of 1 fifth. f2 of t had a period of one tenth. What about f4 of t? Is it a periodic signal? Well, here's how you can always figure that out. If you're adding up two periodic things, you can take the ratio of their periods. In this case, that would be one fifth over one tenth, which would be 10 over five, which would be two. Because this ratio is rational, so this is a rational number, we know that f4 of t is periodic. So that's always the rule that you can use to figure out if sums of periodic things are periodic. Basically, this being rational means I can find an integer multiple of cycles for the first signal and some other integer cycles of the second signal such that they kind of resync back up. Okay? So that's kind of how to, how to picture that. And this one's a pretty easy one, right? If this one is repeating every fifth of a second and this one is repeating every tenth of a second, Signal two will go through two cycles every time this goes through one, but then they've started back over together. So two cycles for this signal, one for that, and now they're back to where they started. All right. Another way of thinking about it is that this period that we actually want to compute now is the least common multiple of the periods. So up here, we just did a check. Hey, is it periodic or not? And because we got a rational number, we say it is periodic. Now we're interested in what's the period. And my explanation just there about thinking of kind of like integer multiples of the period is the reason we use the least common multiple here. So if I take the least common multiple of a fifth and a tenth, I get a fifth. So we now know that signal F4 not only is periodic due to this rationality check, but taking the least common multiple of the periods themselves tells us what the overall period of the signal is. All right, this last example will be slightly different. You can probably guess what we're going to do. We're going to add up f1 of t, which was periodic, and f3 of t, which was periodic. Is f5 of t a periodic signal? So we can go to our test. Take the ratio of t1 to t3. t1 was a fifth. t3 was that weird 2 pi over 37 number. This equals 37 over 10 pi. And because this pi is here, this fraction right here is not a rational number. Pi is irrational. So if I ever take this ratio and I get a pi, then we end up with a non-rational number, which means that F5 is not periodic. Okay. So even though a periodic signal plus a periodic signal, because of the kind of this strange period, I can't find an a integer multiple of cycles of this plus some other integer cycles of this such that these quantities sync back up. And that happens in this case because of the, you know, irrational number for this period, okay? So we have determined that F5 of t is not periodic. So we're basically done. There's no period to find. I am done with that one. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look at some more examples of periodic signals and then get on to piecewise defined signals.